Hey, welcome to Pusher TV. In this video, we're gonna make some major air delivery improvements to this 2014 Ram by installing our three and a half inch mega intake manifold. Like all of our products, this manifold will come with a full set of instructions that are totally step-by-step -step with all the information you need to do the install. This video is intended to be an additional source of information that's gonna give you a couple different angles of view and hopefully just make you feel more comfortable and be more knowledgeable when it comes time to do it yourself. We're gonna be doing all the work on the driver's side of the engine, so let's get this hood popped and get to it. So the first step to installing your new intake manifold is obviously to remove the old one. It has your dipstick mounted to it that needs to be removed. It also has six flange bolts here that would need to be loosened and removed. There's also a T-bolt clamp down here that needs to be loosened and your map sensor needs to be unplugged. One of these little quarter inch impacts is really nice for small hardware, usually eight millimeter and under. It makes removal and reinstall really quick and Some of the rear flange hardware is a little hard to actually get out from back there once you loosen it. So I like to use one of these little magnet sticks and pull it out. There's also a little wiring harness clip here on the back that slips over a stud. One of these body clip coolers works really nice and pops it right off. Depending on how old your truck is, these silicone couplers here can get sticky and it'll stick to the metal parts they join. And it's really nice to be able to get a flat screwdriver in there and separate them. This heat shield's in my way, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that as well. So now I got that out of my way, I can make sure this clamp is nice and loose, work it around. A lot of times that'll pull your factory coupler with it, pull it off the manifold if it doesn't. I have a variety of flat screwdrivers. This particular one is bent in a 90. It helps get to certain areas where you can't get to. So you just wanna kinda go around and peel that silicone coupler off the inlet of the manifold. Once it's kind of out of there, you can also do a little twisting motion of the manifold and pull it right out. Now that the factory manifold's out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and clean up the sealing surface with a straight edge razor blade. We're just gonna scrape off any of the remaining factory gasket to clean it up. So we have both of our manifolds laid out on the bench. We want to transfer over our factory map sensor to our new manifold. Also, while we're here, we'll go ahead and install the supplied brass plugs here for your auxiliary ports, unless you have injectors or a boost sensor or something of that nature that needs to go in your auxiliary ports. It's really easy to do it now while everything's on the bench. So we're ready to reinstall our intake manifold now. Instead of cleaning off that gasket residue off the heater grid area, we went ahead and slipped in one of our fully CNC heater grid delete plates there. You can see there's no more heater grid in that area. It's vastly opened up, really improves airflow to the head. It's a really nice 
uh, complement to the manifold. That's why we went ahead and threw it in at this time. Also, while the camera was off, I went ahead and installed our three and a half inch mega driver side charge tube here. This will not change the install process of the manifold whatsoever. It's just a good thing to pair with it. So we went ahead and put it on while we're doing this install. Okay, so moving forward, we're gonna go ahead and set our factory Cummins intake manifold gasket in place. Then we'll bring our intake manifold in. I like to lift up that dipstick tube a little bit just to give myself some room to feed it in. Also can get our driver's side intercooler tube somewhat in place to help us get this manifold lined up on the bolt holes where it needs to be. We'll get one flange bolt in place. Kind of wiggle our manifold around a little bit and make sure we get a, that bolt threaded in a couple threads. Now we can go ahead and let go of that manifold. It's not going to go anywhere. A quick note about the flange bolts. On these powder coated manifolds, we send stainless washers for each flange bolt. This allows that flange bolt as you tighten it to spin on that stainless washer surface instead of the powder coated surface, which really helps keep that powder coat where it's supposed to be. Since we're on the subject of flange bolts, the factory manifold had a long bolt that went right through the flow path here on the center driver side bolt hole. Due to the design of our manifold, you're able to go to a short bolt, which does not go through the flow path. It bolts down to the flange like the other five. So with your manifold, you'll get a factory common style bolt that matches the other five flange bolts. That'll go in that center driver side bolt hole that's actually accessible from underneath the manifold, kind of right where my pointer finger is touching on the flange. So let's get another bolt in the flange just to kind of hold it there in place for us. Now we're gonna get our intercooler tube hooked up. Since we're using the pusher tube with the heavier duty coupler, you may need a screwdriver to help get it started. This one I got started relatively easily. We're just gonna wiggle it into place and make sure our beads are all in the center. That's all lined up nice. All my bolt holes look like they're lined up pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the other four flange bolts get them relatively snug. Then I'll go through all of our silicone boot connections, get all those lined up and where I want them and tighten all those clamps. Then I'll come back up, do a final torque on my flange bolts. We're down to the last minor steps of the install. We're gonna go ahead and put in our stainless dipstick tube bracket. The two bolt holes furthest apart are gonna go over top of the two bolt holes here on the driver's side of the valve cover. I've already removed the factory hardware from those holes. So we're just gonna set our bracket in place and reuse our factory hardware there. Also, we're gonna reuse the short bolt that originally held the dipstick tube to the factory bracket on the factory manifold in conjunction with this stainless lock nut. We'll get those tightened down in a second. I wanna make sure that my map sensor that's now on the bottom side of the manifold for a cleaner look it is plugged back in. I recommend checking that small hardware there on the side of the valve cover as it threads into brass inserts and the valve cover is plastic. So you wanna check that by hand. It's kind of a delicate procedure. We have our quarter inch impact set on a relatively light setting. That way we can go back and hand retorque anything that we thread in with that thing. Once you check all that hardware, just look over everything else that you touched on this truck and you should be good to go. So we're all finished up. Everything's buttoned up. We're ready to go for a test drive. We'll come back, double check everything once we're done and then hand it off to the customer. I know they're gonna be really happy. This truck's gonna run way better, way cooler. It's gonna have a lot better throttle response. If you have any questions or concerns about this, there's a lot of information on the site. If you can't find something there that you're looking for, we're here for you. Give us a call, shoot us an email, and thanks for watching.